Hey guys, this is Ix Roll at Ix with Rollout Reviews, bringing you another Bionicle review. This time it is the Borok Va from 2002. From left to right, we have set number 8550 Galak Va, 8551 Korok Va, 8552 Levok Va. You're starting to see a pattern. 8553 Parak Ba, 8554 Tanak Ba, and 8555 Nuvak Va. <sighs> Now these sets are very similar to the Taraga, both in the way they're built and in the fact that they're very similar to one another. They are the equivalents set-wise in 2002 to what the Taraga were in 2001, if that makes any sense at all. Because of this, we're going to go about this review in a very similar way. We're going to show off all of the features that these guys have to offer with Tanak, and then we're simply going to highlight the differences among the other five. The Va were support units for the Swarm and fiercely loyal to their queens, despite not being controlled by Krana themselves. Each one served as a quick-running scout for the individual breeds, but had a single primary purpose, to resupply decommissioned Borok with fresh new Krana. Whether a Toa had collected it, or it had been expelled to take control of an uncooperative obstacle, it was the task of the Va to seek out an empty Borok shell and replace its connection to the swarm. Each Va carries a Krana on their back for transport. These come in wildly different colors to the ones found in the equivalent larger breeds and are meant to represent the Krana in a dormant state. These are the colors they assume outside of an active Borok when they are disconnected from the hive mind. While each one will always come with the same colored Krana, the shape is entirely random. There are eight available possibilities, which I go over extensively in my review for the larger Borok. As I mentioned earlier, we'll start with the Tanak Va. This set contains about 27 pieces and includes a random yellow Krana, in my particular case, a Vu. Now, unfortunately, unlike the larger Bullrock, there's nothing securing the Krana in place. It just sort of sits there. Not only that, it's cradled in this loose back flap. So if you shake this around or tip it upside down, it's gonna fall out. Definitely keep an eye out for these Krana or you might lose them. Now, the Borok Va, quite honestly, are my favorite smaller range sets in the entirety of Generation 1, simply because of how expressive these little guys are, especially for their size. These are some of the first Bionicle sets ever to have neck articulation, and it's not only a ball joint. There's also a secondary hinge at the base of the neck neck, which is fantastic. On top of that, they actually have a waist joint, an ab crunch, and a rotation. I can think of maybe one or two other Bionicle sets outside of these six that have anything like that, which is kind of incredible. I mean, it's super simple, but it just adds so much. You can have them up and high and mighty, or you can have them lurching down sinister or curious. There's just so much expression here, and I love it. Unfortunately, outside of the body, there isn't a whole lot more articulation. They have Tohunga or McToran feet here that simply have a rotation, and then this arm here can freely rotate. It is on a black pinaxle, unlike the Taraga who had gray pinaxles in their arms, so they learn from their mistakes. Uh, this arm here is sort of locked in place unless you pull it out and replace it at a 90 degree axis. It's like this just to facilitate the gimmick, but I think the articulation in the body definitely makes up for the rest of it. These guys just look great in my opinion. Now, they're very bug-like, like the larger Bullrock, but I also think they're extremely bird-like. The chicken duck feet, Tohunga legs, uh, definitely don't detract from that. Now, each of the 
Borok Va obviously use the shield of their particular larger Borok for sort of a head crest, and it looks great on the Tanakh. It's sort of a V-fin here with some flame jetting out of the back, and I really like the look of it. As for a tool, the Tanakh basically just reuses Vakama's staff, which is unfortunate. I would have liked to see this recolored, if nothing else. Now, there's actually a separate practical function for the abnormal amount of articulation in the neck and the waist, and it all ties into the gimmick. Basically, you're meant to bring the head all the way down and out of the way. Next, you can use the feet as a solid base, and of course, you can use the waist to aim your shot. Finally, you're meant to press down on the arm and launch the krana out of the back plate like a catapult, just like that. Of course, it's all based on leverage, so depending on where and how hard you press on the arm dictates how far and how powerful the shot is. And it's very effective. You can do a weak shot just like that, or you can hit the thing pretty hard and get it flying and bouncing all over the room, which is a lot of fun. It's actually a very clever and unique idea. Definitely one of my favorite favorite projectile gimmicks, especially for some of the smaller figures. Now, obviously, the goal is to launch the Krana right into the headplate of the larger Borok, and even at such short range, that would be an incredible feat. I'm not entirely sure how possible this is, but who knows? I've gotten close from time to time, and it's definitely worth a shot to try your hand at it. Ah, uh, well. Next up is the Korok Fa. This set contains about 28 pieces and includes a random white Krana. In my particular case, a Sue. I do think it's sort of weird that the backplate here is gray when... Uh, everything else is white? I don't know. I just would have preferred a different color than the standard larger Borok base plate, but I suppose it's not too big of a problem. Now the neck on this guy is extended, which means there's even more articulation, which is all kinds of fun. I think the uh, saw blade shield of the Korok works pretty well for the head crest here, and for tools, he sports tiny little ice picks in the form of Borok teeth. The Nuvakva contains about 26 pieces and includes a random black krana. In this particular case, a za. Now, you'll notice he has these giant claws, and on this side, it sort of weighs down his arm and lifts up the back plate. Now, this isn't really a problem because, well, first, the krana sort of offsets the weight. Second, if you lift the neck up here, it adds a bit of friction and locks this in place as well. I can imagine there are one or two scenarios where you don't have the krana in there and you want to bring down the head that this will be a problem, so I suppose it's worth noting. However, the claws do cause another set of problems as far as the launching gimmick goes, because if you don't have the feet just right, the claws run into them. You sort of have to bring the feet as close together as possible, bring the neck down as far as it will go, and then finally you can uh, you can launch the Krana there. But uh, there are a few more requirements than there are on any of the other Va. All of that aside, I really like the way this guy looks. He's super charming and kind of cute with his giant claws totally out of proportion with the rest of his body. Of course, you can position them like this, 
or like this, depending on your preference. I think the Nuvok shield works really well for his head crest. Not only is it symmetrical, but it gives him these drill horns, which is super cool. Unfortunately, just because of how it's shaped, the designers felt it necessary to swap around the connector piece here and put the ball joint at the front, meaning he doesn't have that extra bit of articulation here which is super noticeable. He looks very static compared to most of the others, unfortunately. Of course, you can just swap it around, but putting the ball joint back here does lift up the back plate a little bit, and at the front here, it doesn't fit quite flush. It looks something like that, but I think that's definitely a price to pay to get this guy looking around like all of the others, or at least most of the others, and we'll get to that here in a second. He's got his problems. I don't think he's my favorite of the Va, but as I said earlier, he certainly is charming. The Levok Va contains about 28 pieces and includes a random dark gray krana. In this particular case, a Ja. The sword really gives you a lot of leverage on that. I find this guy shoots a bit farther than some of the others. Now, I probably should bring up the fact that the instructions would have you build this guy's neck assembly the same way as the Nuvok. However, on all of the promotional images, he appears like this, with the neck articulation present. So I leave it this way, because I like it better and it's still accurate in some capacity. You can see here that the shield sort of is lifted off the top here just a tiny bit. That's what I was talking about with Nuvok, but I care more about the neck articulation than I do about a slight aesthetic discrepancy. So, I don't know, I'm gonna leave it like this and that's how it is. Now, the crest here, the Levok shield, is probably my least favorite for the Va, just because of its blatant asymmetry. It looks sort of weird with like a piston over one eye and it being larger on this side of his head than this side. I don't know. The asymmetry might work for some people, but I'm not a super big fan of it. He does have these minifigure ninja katanas, which are interesting. I guess they're meant to be like machetes that he uses to slice through the brush of the jungle, but uh, they do look slightly out of place. I do kind of like them though, just because of how kind of strange they are. I don't really know what to make of this guy. He's certainly not my favorite, but he's not bad. I think he falls somewhere in the middle. The Galak Va contains about 26 pieces and includes a random purple krana. In this particular case, a bow. Now, one cool thing about the Galak is that the waist attaches differently than any of the others. It's extended a little bit, making it one of the taller of the Va, even without an extended neck. It also gives you a whole lot more articulation in the waist than you will ever need. But it is there, and that is kind of cool. I think the head crest works exceptionally well, very similar to the Nuvok. It's completely symmetrical, and that really works for me. Last but not least, the Galak has a hook hand. He's not holding a hook. His left hand is just replaced with a hook. So he's either a pirate or he knows what you did last summer. Either way, it really works for me. Last but not least, there is the Parok Va, containing about 27 pieces and including a random tan krona. In this particular case, a yo. Now, believe it or not, this guy is probably my favorite of the six for very simple reasons. First, his head crest is completely symmetrical, and as I've expressed a couple times in this review, I really like that. His color scheme is super uniform. Even the krana fits along with the rest of the tan on his body. Nothing really seems out of place. He does have an extended neck like the Korok, giving him a little bit more neck articulation and making him a bit taller. And last but not least, while his weapon is nothing special, it's just an Aniwa hammer, at least 
least it's recolored, unlike the staff on the Tanakh. I guess he's kind of boring, but everything just works, and I really like that. Now, I think the Va are pretty underrated. They're not perfect, I'll admit. I'll even agree that maybe some of the small range sets in later years had a better construction overall. But as I've said, personally, the Va are my favorite. From Generation 1, at least. They're technically clone sets, but I feel each one brings its own tiny bit of personality to the table. And the base design for each one really works for me in general. That's all entirely subjective, though, and your mileage may vary. At the very least, I think that for every canister Borok you have or plan to get, the Va counterpart is absolutely worth having alongside them. So, that is about it, guys, and this is IX Roll at IX, signing off.